Today we're gonna to be testing a one ingredient keto-friendly noodle hack that is kind of going viral on Instagram right now. Sarah and I have tried a lot of different noodle recipes that are keto-friendly here on our channel in the past couple of years, like dozens of them. Some of them require a lot of ingredients and are very scientific feeling. Some of them are just made from vegetables. This is more of the latter. Although I don't know if you guys have ever seen a vegetable. Is this considered a vegetable? Yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever seen an ingredient that looks quite like this. I know I haven't. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm an adult and so are most of you. So we should be able to use an ingredient like this and just remain mature adults, right? This is a king oyster mushroom. I have never seen a mushroom that looks like this before and honestly I did not even know where to get it and so I decided to call the produce queen, my mother, and ask her where I could find this. She told me, you need to go to H Mart. And not only that, she told me the exact directions by memory of where these would be located in a giant Asian grocery store called H Mart. This place is absolutely massive. We do have some B-roll of us discovering these things and um, they're even bigger than I expected. King oyster mushrooms, also known as Plutorus Erngi are a popular edible mushroom with a firm texture and a mild savory flavor. <laughs> so king oyster mushrooms are widely available in many grocery stores. If you don't have an H Mart, maybe check an Asian grocery store. Whole Foods has a great mushroom section. Sometimes you can check Amazon Fresh because they are connected to Whole Foods. Look for mushrooms that are firm, plump, and have a creamy white color. <laughs> But before we continue, we're gonna take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Element. And this is a grapefruit Paloma, which I have been drinking every day this summer. Element is delicious electrolyte drink mix with everything that you need and nothing that you don't. That means lots of salt and no sugar. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Sarah and I love all of the flavors of Element, but our absolute favorites are the citrus salt, orange salt, raspberry salt, and grapefruit salt, which is back for a limited time. When you go into ketosis for the first time, you shed a lot of water, and inside that water are your electrolytes. This can leave you feeling tired, have muscle cramps, and even nausea, also known as the keto flu. Element replenishes your electrolytes so that you feel better. Sarah and I love drinking Element, which is plain old water, but Element has a ton of recipes on their website from cocktails, mocktails, popsicles, and so much more. Like this grapefruit Paloma is just ice, sparkling water, grapefruit salt, and lime juice. It is super refreshing and it almost tastes like a cocktail. Right now Element is offering our community a free sample pack. It looks like this so that you can try all of the flavors. That's eight single serving packets free with any order from Element. This way you can try all the flavors and share some with a salty friend. In order to get this deal you must go to drinklmnt.com slash keto twins. So Sarah and I follow a technically keto diet and we have been since January of 2019. And so Sarah and I try to stick to about 20 net carbs a day. So that's what we focus on and it works really well for us. Sarah and I lost about 160 pounds doing it this way and we're very relaxed. So for one cup of these mushrooms uncooked, it has about nine carbohydrates, three grams of fiber and 51 calories. So it has about six net carbs per cup. If you compare that to traditional pasta, a typical cup of spaghetti noodles has about 43 grams of carbs. So if this works out, it's gonna be a really great way to cut down on those carbs. So we were scrolling on Instagram, trying to look for inspiration, and this one definitely caught Sarah's attention, if you know what I mean. What? I love me a good mushroom. Exactly. This is by Fashionate Food Belly. We decided that we are going to try these keto mushroom noodles in two different ways. We are gonna go with a traditional keto-friendly Rayo's tomato-based sauce with a little basil and a little parm. And then we decided to go kind of like an Asian route. So we decided to go with a peanut soy type of dressing for these noodles. So we bought two packages of these mushrooms and you're gonna be needing a peeler if you're gonna wanna make more of a wide noodle. And we also bought this shredder tool. We can link it below, it's by OXO. It's really, really sharp and it doesn't take as much space as like a normal spiralizer, which is really cool. So we thought why not try one or two using that method as well. <laughs> is there a not weird way to do this? No, there isn't. So do this in the privacy of your own home, honestly. So we've started boiling our pot of water because you're gonna to want to boil these noodles for 20 minutes. We're gonna trim off the edges, the tops and the bottoms of our mushrooms, and then I'm gonna start using the peeler to create noodles. 
I think it's gonna take a little bit of practice, but I'll get there. I think it's easier if you lay it down flat and use the peeler. Just with like handmade pasta, it's all right for it to be a little bit organic or rustic, like we would like to call it. Mm -hmm. Different shapes. You do need to use a bit of pressure though. So here's our noodles. This is about one and a half of those mushrooms. It actually took more practice than I realized and you need the right amount of pressure and everything like that because I don't know if it's just too smooth for the peeler to go over, but here's what we came out with and it's not bad actually. We're gonna drop this into some boiling water for 20 minutes. So our wider noodles are gonna be for our peanut sauce. And we're gonna be using this shredding tool because we want to see if we can get something close to spaghetti. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna do probably another mushroom and a half of the thinner spaghetti noodles and we're gonna boil that maybe like 10 to 15 minutes. So Sarah and I decided to try to cut these by hand just in case you guys don't have like that special tool. And it turned out to be easier than we thought. So if you can and you have the patience, cut them by hand. Honestly, I think that they even took less time than cutting them with that tool. I need to do more arm exercises. This is really heavy. We are going to be draining these now because it's been 20 minutes. And then we're gonna cook the um, spaghetti mushroom noodles. And then we are going to start making our sauce. So for our Asian inspired peanut sauce, all you're gonna need is one third cup of smooth peanut butter, five tablespoons of water, one teaspoon of chili garlic sauce, one tablespoon of brown sugar swerve, two teaspoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of red Thai curry paste, one tablespoon of lime juice, and one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar. And we just mix that all together in a bowl and like let that sit on the side for about 10 minutes to let those flavors melt together. And then you're just ready to toss everything in their respective sauces. We're just going to be tossing the wider noodles in the peanut sauce with a little bit of green onion and cilantro. And with the rayo sauce, we're gonna top that with some Parmesan and a little bit of basil. So I was apprehensive for a moment because when I was adding the noodles to the sauce, it looked gray and I didn't feel that gray was an appetizing color. What's wrong with gray? So which one do you want to try first? Since we spent a lot of time showing how to make the peanut sauce, I would say let's try the peanut sauce first. Okay. Nervous, but excited. Mm -hmm. The mushroom, I mean, how yeah, bad could it be? We've there. tried some weird things on this channel, yeah. so. Mm. <laughs> what? Fun. Mm -hmm. Definitely has a chew to it, mm -hmm. but I was kind of nervous that they were gonna fall apart when we boiled them. So we I'm, have made several noodles that have kind of fallen apart. You can't really use hot sauces with them because they're made of like cheese and stuff. Yeah. You know what it is? So I bit into a green onion and it was crunchy and it really threw me off for a second. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is that crunch? And then I remembered. But yeah, they, I think they mm -hmm. hold up really well, actually, to mm -hmm. the sauce, this sauce especially. And they don't really taste like much. I can't really taste the mushroom at mm -hmm. all. It's very mild flavor. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. Now this one, it looks pretty legit. Oh, let me, okay, so we did cut them a little bit different. We tried to use a shredder and that worked for like half of the mushroom. And then we had to go in and actually like slice the mushroom. And so we have a little bit of a different consistency with those, but overall, I think it's pretty good. They're holding up well. Honestly, to me, there is a little bit of a chew. Right. But there is no weird aftertaste. No. And I think that, you know, in a lot of pasta sauces or like marinara's, there are mushrooms in those sauces. So right, it goes, well, goes with well with it. Right. I would say though, it's got a unique texture. <laughs> like uh, maybe like an undercooked. Maybe undercooked. it's like closer to like shirataki noodles. Mm. Okay, is the texture off-putting to you? No. I think it could even go thinner though. Hmm. I mean, I like it. I would say if you guys like palmini, that it's kind of a little bit tougher than palmini, but I really prefer it with the peanut sauce. Mm -hmm. So that's probably how I would eat this in the future. 
The original creator did make it in a like Chinese style or Asian style. Mm -hmm. I really don't mind it in this application, but I do agree that the Asian style is the winner here. Yeah. So this was super interesting to try. If you guys see any other noodle recipes that you would like us to try, you can comment below, tag us on Instagram at Keto Twins Official, tag us on TikTok at Keto Twins. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It's free, it's just clicking a button, but we would really appreciate it. We would love to get to 250,000 subscribers this year. If you like stuff like this, you should watch this video here where we made keto ravioli using something really special. And we will see you over there. Anyway, I'm Emily. And I'm Sarah. And, and we, we are the Keto, keto Twins, twins signing out. out. <laughs> no, that's not for doggies. Sorry.